Hey, Axe. Glad to be here with you this evening. It's been a long work week for me. I'm sure it has been for you. I'm really looking forward to Saturday, getting down to College Station. Definitely going to go hit up some uh, Texas Roadhouse, give me some rolls. Probably that 10-ounce uh, prime rib before the game. Um, but uh, this, is, this is great to be here because, uh, like you, I work the 9 to 5, and I come here to kind of decompress. This helps me get through the week especially those long work weeks. And uh, just like you and me, we, we love Aggie football, so this is something that helps us to forget about everything else that's going on. So, got a little bit different show for you tonight. Uh, we're not gonna look at so much of the plays slowed down. Uh, I am gonna show you a lot of what they're doing, you know, at least give you something to see. But we're gonna take a little bit deeper dive into the stats, and that took me a, quite a bit longer to prepare this week. Uh, but I think you're really gonna enjoy it. So, um, hopefully you do and you find it valuable. Uh, I'm gonna tell you up front, I think Aggies are going to win. I do think they're gonna win big, and the spread is somewhere hovering around 20, 20 and a half, maybe 21, it's been right around there. We played Missouri right last week, won big, 35-14. The spread, if I remember correctly, started at about nine, ended up about 11. Um, I had them to cover that, and I'm gonna have them to cover this. Now, so what I'm gonna try and do tonight is convince you that that's the way it's supposed to be, okay? Um, and uh, hopefully you come away convinced as much as I think I have been now that I've been through some of these stats and seen some of these. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see what you think. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right on in them. I'm gonna give you a little bit of backstory as well, and then uh, we'll talk more in the back. Don't forget, like and subscribe, show me some love there if you like what you see. Appreciate all your support. All right, the Aggies make it two in a row after beating Alabama and Missouri in consecutive weeks, are now five and two on the season, and are ready to bring in a South Carolina to try four, six, and two. The Gamecocks are in their first season with the new head ball coach. Will Muschamp was shown the door, compiling just six wins in his last two seasons. Going two and eight last year was the final nail in the coffin. Like both South Carolina and Muschamp, they were eager to part ways. The once thought to be heir of the throne to Mac Brown at the University of Texas now exiled to analyst, although analyst for Kirby Smart's Georgia might be considered an upgrade at this point. So insert Shane Beamer. Beamer is a coach's son. His dad coached many years at Virginia Tech. He comes to South Carolina by way of Oklahoma most recently as the assistant head coach. Previously, he has done stints at Georgia, Virginia Tech, South Carolina, Mississippi State, and Tennessee. South Carolina is committed to Beamer long-term as they know the reset will take a while with Coach focusing on culture first and foremost. This year's 4-3 start, 1-3 in conference, is of no concern for the Gamecocks. They can get any wins early in his tenure, it will be all the better, but they are clearly focused on years 3, 4, and 5. Currently, Beamer is dealing with a QB change. Luke Dottie was injured last game against Vanderbilt and looks to be out this Saturday and for the rest of the season. For now, Beamer will have Zeb Nolan at the helm for the Gamecocks. But it could be worse. Zeb is a graduate transfer from Iowa State who ended up leading South Carolina on a game-winning drive last week against Vanderbilt. He was given the offense with 136 left in the fourth where he went five for eight passing driving 75 yards to get the go-ahead TD. Pretty impressive as if you ask me. With Nolan looking serviceable, who is around him to make plays after he distributes? South Carolina's primary back is Kevin Harris. He's probable for this Saturday, although injured. But Zaquandre White has almost identical total yards. White averages 6.8 yards per carry, but has only been given 34 touches on the year. Harris, who has nearly two times as many carries, is only averaging 3.5 yards per carry. Overall, South Carolina averages 125 yards per game, but when in conference, they are only mustering up 106 yards per game. In large part, South Carolina is struggling to run on first down, averaging only 3.5 yards per carry. This may sound like they are staying on schedule, but it leaves little room for error and makes it much easier for a drive to stall out. If they are second and seven and throw an incomplete pass or only run one to two yards on second down, they put themselves in third and five or seven. In this situation, they are only averaging about two yards per play when in that down and distance. Clearly, this isn't very successful. And 
Doty, pressure comes, slides to his left, throws, and it's caught around the two-yard line. Down, rushing attempts by their opponents. Look for that to balloon even more as AM is... First and goal, Doty, quick hitter, near side, pass. South Carolina throws on first down about 43% of the time and averages 6.8 yards per attempt. For comparison, AM is getting just over nine yards per attempt on first down passes. For more perspective, the Missouri team AM just beat gets 4.3 yards per carry and eight yards per attempt passing. Quite the difference. Red zone conversions was a clear weakness that I highlighted last week for Missouri. South Carolina is worse. Missouri gets about 3.5 yards per carry inside their opponent's 20. South Carolina only gets about 1.9, a stark drop-off. They have converted 74% of the time in the red zone. 23 attempts, 17 converted, 11 were TDs, and 6 were field goals. Run these numbers for an in-conference opponent, and we see another big shift with a conversion rate of only 53%. 13 attempts, 7 of those conversions, 5 being TDs. South Carolina's overall run game and in the red zone in particular, is not very strong. They look to have a hard time putting up points on RD, which can be incredibly stingy. Okay, so think about how stingy our defense was against Missouri. So now you can see a direct comparison with what we're up against with South Carolina versus Missouri. So Missouri's red zone offense, uh, they converted 95% of the time. South Carolina only does it 74% of the time. Their red zone D, uh, whereas Missouri's opponents converted 90% of the time, South Carolina's opponents are converting 88% of the time, so very similar. Talk to you about this red zone rush that was going on. Missouri does about 3.4 yards per carry on their, uh, inside their opponent's 20. South Carolina's only averaging 1.9, a very sharp drop off. Third down conversions is also very sharp. Missouri was 50% conversion rate, whereas South Carolina is only 39%. Keep all that in mind as you think about how we played against Missouri and what that point spread was. We beat them by 21. Currently, the spread for South Carolina is 21. These stats seem to suggest they will make their living on field goals, but that can all change with turnovers and tackles for loss. For SC, to make any headway uh, in this game, they likely will have to rely on turnovers. So for more comparison, take a look at what Missouri, South Carolina, and a has done on the year. Missouri has a turnover margin of three. South Carolina is one. Now we have a minus three turnover margin, and so you might think, well, that's bad. Well, sure it is. It's not great. Um, but we have been plus two the last couple games uh, in particular, so we may be trending in a different way. South Carolina, I believe, was minus two versus Vanderbilt. You can also see the tackles uh, for loss and how many yards that have been given up due to that. Um, A&M is getting, uh, has gotten 193 yards on the year for an average of about uh, 27 yards per game. Um, and South Carolina is doing 162, which you, you see is somewhat lower than what Missouri was doing. Um, Missouri's average in about four tackles for loss um, or four plays that end up in a tackle for loss or loss of yardage, negative play uh, per game. South Carolina is actually getting 4.5. and ms doing 3.9. So just to give you some more comparison looks to see what you think we might do versus how we did against Missouri and now with South Carolina coming up. We saw against Alabama just how much difference turnovers make. They account for big swings in momentum and points. We got two and converted. Bama blocked a punt and got an immediate seven. Turnovers are huge. Tackles for loss are like penalties in that a team could have been second and five, took a five yard sack, or a two yard tackle for loss, and is now third and long instead of third and short. These make a big difference over the course of a game and can account for many stalled drives. We saw this in our first three games and still continue to see penalties affect our drives. Tackles for loss just do this to a lesser degree, yardage-wise, but take the down, so arguably a more severe effect. South Carolina is not particularly good in turnover margin. They have one more takeaway than their opponent. Put another way, 
In seven games, they figured to have gotten one more turnover than they gave away. So they could have gotten four INTs and three fumbles, but gave away four INTs and two fumbles. They could, however, be more prone to lower that margin this game as they were minus two against Vandy, and we have been plus two combined in our last two outings, so not a good recipe. This all definitely paints a dire outlook for South Carolina. They struggle to move the ball on the ground, which makes them one-dimensional and predictable, and even through the air, they are lackluster. Any number that is below seven yards per attempt is generally viewed as unable to sustain drives. This idea bears out when their first down stats come into focus. South Carolina averages 17.3 first downs per game. Look at their game against Vandy. They had 17 first downs. They also had 11 possessions, which means they are getting about 1.5 first downs per drive. Contrast that with A&M's win over Missouri. A&M averages 21 first downs, but had 29 in this game. They also had 11 possessions for an average of 2.6 first downs per drive. To reason through this a bit to make a point, A&M can start from the 26 and score a TD, whereas South Carolina would have to start from the 15. It's not a perfect comparison, but you get the idea behind how much more powerful A&M's first down rate is compared to theirs. All right, let's highlight a few particular things that the Gamecocks do. You see the trick play here. Beamer is no stranger to a trick play. I expect we're going to see at least one uh, this Saturday. You're going to see throughout, though, uh, fairly competent play overall, but you're going to see some mistakes that took, took place, uh, just like that sack. Um, Dottie here is running. Zeb Nolan does not figure to be a ground threat. And you're going to see some, some careless things done in, in mix of good plays like that run uh, from the two-yard line into the end zone. Uh, not much going on there. Then all of a sudden, the guy comes out of you know what seemingly is nowhere to get the sack. So they have potential. Um, it's just not really quite coming together for them this year. But some of that is to be expected, right? Because they are in the, the first year with Beamer. Um, you know, so you'll see there's a penalty there, a face mask, uh, and overall there's just going to be some things that they do that stall out their drives or give their opponents um, easy access to the end zone. And that it will continue to be a theme, but again, you see the wide open receiver here, and the ball is distributed, which is what their quarterbacks do, do well. They game manage well, um, and you know, do their job as best they can they're not going to be any kind of um you know heisman contender but when the receiver's wide open like you see there they're going to deliver and they're going to deliver well in time uh and accurate so they can be a threat and we tend to make receivers wide open um in our secondary so we could have some fits there um, i don't like that matchup for us and um it's something that worries me and will probably continue to worry me throughout the year but for South Carolina, you saw the fumble there, again, the sloppy play. Uh, that, that continues to be something that they do. Same thing right here. Um, they just need to take care of the ball better. But if we can capitalize on those and get this game um, put away early and quick and just completely smash this, then we should have a very successful outing. All right, so what do you think? Uh, hopefully you found some value in those stats. I think you are probably convinced at this point that we're going to have a successful day on Saturday. I think it's going to be quite successful, but tell me what you think. Tell me if you think we're, we're missing something. Tell me if you think that it's maybe not quite enough to actually get that spread of 21 points. Let's say it, it jumps up to there at least or stays there uh, by Saturday. Um, if it's in that area, I feel like I'm, that's what I'm going to be betting, but you tell me. Um, are you convinced? Are you not convinced? Uh, what do you What do you think? I think for me, going through these and seeing these, especially that um, that red zone play, the uh, the turnovers, the tackles for loss, and the first downs uh, were very convincing for me. Is there something else that you'd like to see that you think would maybe help you to get over the edge to thinking that we're going to win this handily, or do you think this could be a close game? Is there something that we need to I'll look at it a little closer. Again, their, their, their passing average is under seven, right? And so whenever you pass, you need to be able to do that uh, efficiently. 
because you're going to have incompletions as well. And so anything that's over seven really averages out to 3.5 if you have one completion and one incompletion. And a lot of quarterbacks tend to average around 50% completion rate, which is why we look at that number. They're under that. Not drastically under that. They're not at five. They're just at 6.8. And so that maybe is the one thing that uh, I would have said would have convinced me maybe to pump the brakes on this if, for, if perhaps their passing game were something like eight or eight and a half, maybe even nine, kind of up there where we are. You know, but it's not. Um, if I'm going to be wrong about this, one area I think that it possibly could be is, um, you know, our run defense has been a little suspect. And some of those uh, wide open receivers have also been suspect. But we, we haven't tend to give up a lot of big pa pass plays this year. Um, just our giving up first downs, you know, some 8, 9, 10 uh, yard passes on third down and that sort of thing. And we've had those stints where we give up large chunks uh, on, on the ground. We've had great times when we're, we're not giving that up, though, too. So um, we seem to be trending in the direction that we're getting better. So I don't think that that actually will, will bear out. Um, but one thing you can't really predict, um, I mean, this is an odd-shaped ball. It bounces different ways every Saturday. So... We give a few takeaways, they get a few scores, we get punched in the mouth like we did to Alabama, and we might, might find ourselves on our heels. So um, I just wouldn't predict that at this point. Same way when we played Alabama, I wouldn't have exactly predicted us to win, but I knew that it was a possibility. We had the talent, we had the 12th man, um, and, and, and because that had uh, talent gap had narrowed, it was possible if we did get a few things to go our way and or prepared well, and we did. I really don't see the talent uh, on South Carolina as something that can really make up that difference. So even if we do get some of those turnovers, I don't think it's enough for them to win. Um, I still think we win a game like that uh, by seven. So my prediction What's your prediction? I'm going to predict this game. Uh, I'm going to go big on this one. I, I feel very confident in this one. I'm going to go... I really have them scoring somewhere between... Uh, I'm going to give you a full number. I'm not going to give you a range. I have them not scoring any points. I'm going to go with zero points this time. And I've got us going to go for uh, 42. 42 to nothing. That's what I got this game. That's a heck of a prediction. Um, we had two 100-yard rushers last game, and I am going to say that that happens again. But I am also going to predict, I don't think it's happening. I need to go back and check. I am going to predict also that Calzada gets his first 300-yard passing game. I feel like it's going to be big. I can't wait. Um, if you're going to be in College Station, hit me up with a message. Let me know. Maybe we can meet up, whatever. If not, Go eat at Texas Roadhouse or your favorite restaurant because that's one of my favorite things to do whenever I go back in town is to eat at my favorite place. So um, I'll be there. Can't wait. It's going to be a great weekend. Going to forget about this week. I'm glad we got here to do this. Uh, and again, don't forget to show me some love. Like and subscribe. See you Saturday. Gig'em.